It's the professional MasterChef quarterfinal. These six talented chefs stood out in their heats. Now, they will face two more challenges to test them even further. I'm absolutely buzzing to be here. I'm excited to show what I'm made of. <laughs> I'm curious now. I don't want this to end. It's too much fun. I think it's all to play for now. You just got to put your head down and push as hard as you can. It's definitely going to heat up from here on in. First, they will have to devise a dish from scratch, featuring one key ingredient. I really think that you've pushed yourself here today. Those who can deliver to the brief go through to cook for some of the country's most discerning food critics. This is a truly exceptional dish. Only the best will earn a place in the knockouts. I want bold, I want brilliant, and I want beautifully cooked food. They should come into this kitchen all guns blazing and show us how good they really are. Chefs, welcome to your quarterfinal. This time, you are facing an invention test. This is when you have got to really stand out for the right reasons. Because at the end of this, two of you will be leaving us. The remaining four will get the opportunity to cook for some of the best critics in this country. Underneath the box in front of you is the key ingredient that we want you to use. Chefs, reveal your ingredient. Rice is an ingredient that's used all over the world. There are different varieties of rices behind us. It's up to you which one you choose, but we're looking for you to get creative today. We're going to give you 10 minutes to plan your dish. Come and choose your ingredients. The chefs can choose additional ingredients from a larder that includes a selection of fish, meat, fruit, vegetables, and herbs and spices. Why I've chosen rice is because I think this is going to challenge our chefs. It's the one ingredient on MasterChef our chefs sometimes really, really struggle with. But it's not just about the rice that they choose, it's about what they put with it. What's going to make this dish special? What we're looking for is a chef that understands one of the most staple ingredients known all over the world. It's very challenging. I didn't expect rice, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the dish that I've got going on in my head should compete very well against everybody else. Obviously, the cooking of the rice has to be um, perfect uh, flavours, so I'm going to try and stick with the spices and chilli and just really focus down that route. I think it's really important today to try and stand out. I've got a dish in mind and uh, I don't want to give too, uh, too much away right now. Right, chefs, you now have one hour and ten minutes to cook one amazing plate of food. Off you go. <music> 24-year-old Yaz from Norwich has only been a professional chef for two years. Not being able to plan for today is really difficult. Dishes at work, we will go through three, four tastings before we even contemplate putting them on the menu. So it's going to be pretty daunting. How do you feel about the, the ingredient selection? Um, yeah, good. I think there's a lot of variety. There's a lot of different ways we can go with it. I feel, I feel good. I've gone for the aborio rice. Um, it's the closest to like a pudding rice. Um, I'm going to go for a rice pudding. I'm going to do it with some like pickled prunes, some plum puree, uh, hopefully some like puffed uh, crispy rice on there as well. My mum makes a rice pudding almost every Sunday, so it's something that I love, and I think out of everything, it's the one thing that I thought of when you said rice, so I think I just go with my gut. But it's got to be, you know, a knockout rice pudding if it's going to get you through to the next round, though. Yeah, it will be. Yaz is making a white chocolate rice pudding, but instead of baking it, she's putting it on the stove like a, a risotto. 
Love the addition of pickled prunes, plum puree, and puffed rice on top, because that's going to add a little bit of crunch and bite. Junior sous chef Freddy went straight from catering college into Michelin-style restaurants to learn his trade. I really enjoy uh, creating new dishes. I think it's very exciting to go in there um, with a blank canvas and see what runs through my mind to, to make for them. Freddy has chosen a little poussin. He's doing a, a potato puree to go with it, and then he's going to serve it with a rice crumb deep frying rice and then mixing it with some shallots and, and crispy crumbs and red currants. I'm a little bit concerned as to how much of this rice sits with this dish and is there going to be enough rice within the dish itself. Remember, Freddie, this is a dish about rice. Yeah. And rice has to sit at the forefront of it. You can use it however you like, many different varieties as you need. Absolutely. The, uh, the only rice in the dish is Puff, uh, wild rice, puff rice. Yeah, is that okay? Uh, you tell me. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It should, it should bring the dish together. I didn't want to do a risotto or a rice pudding, but so I'm hoping it comes together for you. I hope so too, Freddie. <laughs> Chefs, 15 minutes have gone. <laughs> French-born Jan is a 30-year-old private chef with his own catering business in London. I would like to think myself as a creative kind, but yeah, the invention test can go really one way or the other. I can, I can nail it or I can screw it up. We don't know. We'll see that in a minute. <laughs> Which rice have you gone for? So I'm going for uh, pudding rice. Uh, which I'm going to do in coconut and lime and matcha. Rice pudding? Rice pudding, basically, yeah, with um, poached pears. And I've got uh, vanilla ice cream on the go as well. You're not the only one cooking rice pudding in the kitchen yeah, I've today? Heard. I'm pretty confident that that will stand out in us, but then I will also be able to uh, create a wonderful dish. Looks like you've got a lot of work to do. Thanks. Jan's rice pudding has coconut, lime, and I love the addition of the matcha as well. This is going to make it a lime green colour. If he gets everything done, it will be a great dessert. Love the addition of poached pear and vanilla syrup, the hazelnut, the vanilla ice cream on the side. Jan's put himself under a huge amount of pressure to get the rice pudding cooked in time. Rice pudding you do need to cook nice and slowly. If you boil the rice too quickly, it will not take on the flavour of the matcha tea, the lime or the coconut. 20-year-old South African-born Neil is a chef de partie, working in a three-rosette country house hotel in Wales. There's so many different types of flavour pairings and combinations that nobody's thought of yet because uh, they just don't sound good together, but as long as your audience has got an open mind, I think you can do anything with food. Neil is using basmati rice, and he's also taken some wild rice. The basmati rice, he's infused with saffron, and he's cooking it down into a puree. The wild rice, Neil is going to make into a puff crisp uh, to go over his dish. I'm a little bit worried about the dish because we've got a mackerel ceviche, we've got pickled pear, we've got a tomato water coming onto the dish. Who knows what it's going to be like at the end? Neil, you look a bit nervous. Uh, I'm a bit nervous, yeah, but uh, hopefully it'll come together. It's a hard challenge to set, so, you know, it's difficult to refine rice in such a way, but uh, hopefully it'll come together in the end. You need to relax, try and remember we're looking for one good plate of food that showcases rice. Stay focused on the rice. Chefs, you've got 25 minutes left. Brighton-based pop-up chef Christian stood out in his heat with both a strong skills test and signature dish. My food's completely different. Uh, I think they like the quirkiness, the, the background to my dishes, and I think they're excited to see what else I can offer. I'm pretty good under pressure, and um, I'm quite quick on my feet, so let's see what happens. Christian, what rice are you using, and what is your dish? The dish is going to be pan-fried sea bream fillet. It's going to be served with 
uh, Wario rice, which is cooked like a risotto with a nice fresh fish stock I've made. It's going to have peas, it's going to have chorizo and some brown shrimp. Do you think it's inventive enough? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have, have some different elements to it that you might not have tried before, so I'm hoping that's going to stand out from the rest. Getting risotto right is not easy. You have to really work the risotto, look after it, and give it some TLC. And then the pan-fried uh, fish sitting on top really does need to be cooked just right. Chefs, 15 minutes to go. Olivia is a 24-year-old sous chef working at a five-star hotel in London. I get a lot of requests to make dishes from all around the world, maybe kind of half a day's notice. So I'm going to take all that experience and just hope to kind of give it all I've got. Olivia is taking some inspiration from the Middle East, from an Arabic dish called kapsa, a traditional rice and meat dish. The cooking of the chicken needs to be just right, not dry. Olivia is using jasmine rice. It should be lovely and fluffy and also make sure it doesn't overcook. We want to taste the chilies and we want to taste the spices. Where does the Arabic style of, of cooking um, come into this? I cook for quite a lot of Arabic guests at work. You know, some of them like it spicy, they don't like it spicy. And I knew when rice has to be the star, I needed to do this. How much do you want to stay in this competition? Yeah, I really want to make it all the way to the end. I um, just want to kind of keep the nerves under wraps and, yeah, hope for the best for my rice. Thank Good you. luck. Good luck. Thank you. You have 10 minutes left. Chefs, we have 60 seconds to go. That's it. Time's up. How'd you get on, mate? Oh, I don't know if I've been enough rice in there. Yeah. That's my problem. My mind went blank, so... It's really, 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 really difficult to make rice like the star of a dish without doing, like, a risotto. First up is Neil. He has made mackerel ceviche, asparagus, tomato con casse, and a pickled pear salad, served with wild rice, deep-fried and puffed, saffron rice puree, and finished with a tomato consomme and a chive oil. It's a bit difficult to eat a ceviche when you've still got the skin of, of the, the mackerel on it. The rice puffs brings texture to it, but I thought there would have been so much on it coating the mackerel that it was going to be a, a very strong part of the dish more use of the rice would have made it more evident uh, on this dish. The thing that really shines for me on this plate is the pickled pear. It's got a lovely bite to it, uh, it's got a lovely texture to it, and I love the acid that runs through the dish. But the saffron rice is too thick, it's too heavy, and it's too strong in, in saffron. For me, the rice doesn't come to the forefront. Tough challenge, uh, and yeah, just a bit disappointed with it, really. Olivia has made her take on an Arabic kabsa, a traditional meat and rice dish, poached pusan breast with jasmine rice, spiced with turmeric, cumin, ginger, cinnamon, and chili, topped with pine nuts, pistachio, apricot, and raisins. Whew. The rice is cooked nicely. It is really hot, but I find when I eat it with the apricots and the raisins, it sort of calms that heat. And I really like the textures from the pistachios uh, and the pine nuts going through it. I really like it. If Monica finds it hot, can you imagine how I find it? Really hot. But I do like your thinking, I like your ideas, and I really think that you've pushed yourself here today, and that's what we're looking for. 
I definitely think I kept to the brief. I was really trying to kind of keep the, the rice the main focus. Some of the feedback was positive, so that's why I've got to kind of like keep in the back of my mind. I guess I'm happy. It could have been worse. I think that's good. Freddie has served roasted poussin topped with puffed wild rice and shallot crumble, with courgettes, asparagus, roasted giroux, pomme puree, baby spinach, and a shallot and chicken jus. I really like the way your plate looks. You've taken time to really dress this in an appealing way. I think what you have got is a very flavoursome dish here. The chicken, the breasts are beautifully cooked. The rolls, the pomme puree is nice and smooth, and a lovely little uh, chicken sauce there in the centre. It's just lacking enough of the rice for my liking. The crumb does taste good, though. You've got lovely schlops running through that, and you can taste that. I love the crumb on, on the chicken. The chicken is, is nicely cooked with that crumb, and the texture is wonderful. It would have been good to see you venture out a bit more and have a bit more courage to, to use another type of rice, maybe. But, you know, well done. Not a bad effort, mister. Thank you. I'm feeling really happy now. I probably could have added a, another touch of rice to it, but I think overall it was, it was a good place of food. Yaz's dish is a vanilla, white chocolate and toasted arborio rice pudding, topped with a plum puree deep-fried wild rice, almonds and pickled prunes, served with a rice pudding ice cream. Where did the ice cream come from, Yes, You didn't mention that. I wasn't going to do it, and then I thought, I think it needs like a cold element just to sort of lift it slightly, because the hot and cold would be quite nice. The cooking of the rice pudding, I really like it. It's creamy, it's sweet with the white chocolate running through it. I love it with the plum jam as well. I love the idea of the, the rice ice cream, but um, it's just got a graininess to it. The, the prunes on the, on the dish look great. You've got the bite and texture through the almonds. You've used the rice three different times, but the puff wild rice, are some that are just about edible, and there's some that's just really rock hard. It wasn't completely negative. They seemed to enjoy elements, but what they didn't enjoy was pretty, was pretty bad. Christian's dish is pan-fried fillet of sea bream and a pea risotto with chorizo, brown shrimp, asparagus, and anchovies, finished with a chorizo oil. The fish cookery, um, it's slightly over, it, it's a bit dry, but my main concern is the risotto. It doesn't have that beautiful richness that you want in a, in a risotto, you know, the creaminess that you get as we slowly cook it and the rice releases its starch and, and it bonds. I don't find the risotto very interesting, it's a bit flat. The anchovy uh, and the little shrimps, not really adding anything into the dish, they're just there for the sake of being there. And I'm going to be honest, you know, Christian, it's not made very well. I feel a bit deflated, actually, because I think uh, I let myself down a bit there. In the end, it was the wrong mix of ingredients. Finally, Jan has served a coconut, lime and matcha rice pudding, topped with poached pear and a praline crisp, served with lime-infused coconut milk and a white chocolate ice cream. I really like the flavours of what's around this dish. The, the coconut, the lime and the pears on it, the texture from the praline on the top. Everything about this dish is absolutely, yes please, interesting. You have contrast of flavours, you have textures, you've got a rice pudding, you've added the matcha tea into it and the coconut, which makes it a little bit different. But your rice pudding's not cooked. That was just a stupid error. But yeah, I undercooked the rice which was the main element, so... <laughs> Idiot. Chefs, thank you. I know this was tough, but today tells us a lot about you as chefs, and that is really important. 
We've got a decision to make. We'll call you back in when we've made it. Two of you will be leaving the competition. Go and take a break. Thank you. There were surprises in the kitchen today. There was some good uses of rice. I thought Jan's dish was really interesting. Great combination of ingredients. Brought them together, tasting beautifully well. But the rice just wasn't quite cooked enough. Another dish which I really enjoyed, though a bit too spicy and hot, was Olivia's. The rice was cooked nicely. It had a strong element of spice. The chicken was beautifully cooked and the idea was interesting. What about Freddie? The one rice element that Freddie put into the dish was perfectly executed. It was crunchy, it was cooked. I loved the shallot element running through it with the breadcrumbs and it had really good flavour. Freddie and Olivia have done enough to go through to the next round and I'm willing to take a risk on Jan and put him through as well. That leaves us with one more chef to put through. We've got Christian, Neil and Yaz. Yaz made us the white chocolate rice pudding. I liked the way the rice pudding was cooked and really enjoyed it with the plum jam. The undercooked rice was a problem for me, but there are some really good points that I thoroughly enjoyed. I think we're both really disappointed with Christian's risotto dish. I watched him make it. It wasn't good enough. It, it was cooked in the wrong pan and he just didn't give it the love and care. Neil's dish was light and fresh, but a saffron rice puree with, with a mackerel uh, ceviche was just not working and there wasn't enough of the rice krispies to really make a difference. But it just wasn't quite there for me. Looking back at it now, I probably would have done something a bit different, possibly. I'm not too sure if I've done enough to, to keep myself in the competition today. Uh, I think it was a tough challenge and uh, we'll see what happens. If I did go home, I'd be upset, but um, I think uh, after, after that round, I'd probably deserve it, so can't really complain. I think it was a really mixed bag today. I feel like everyone had little negatives. No one did, like, amazing, I don't think. Um, it's really hard to, it's really hard to tell. What will be, will be. <laughs> Chefs, that was a tough challenge. An invention test is never easy when you've got to think on your feet. We can only take four chefs through to cook for our critics. We've made our decision. The first chef leaving the competition is... Christian. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. The second chef leaving the competition is... Neil. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Neil. I'm disappointed, obviously. I'm still quite young, so I think there's still a lot of opportunities for me up there. Um, I'll see what the world's got to offer for me. I feel pretty frustrated. Uh, I really don't think I uh, did myself trash this. I knew it was no good, didn't I? So, um, it's a shame. Congratulations, you're our four chefs going through to cook for our critics. Bit of advice, make sure you've got your game faces on. Chefs, welcome back to our kitchen. You are cooking for some of the best critics in the country. William Sitwell, Jimmy Famurewa, and Grace Dent. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to really showcase two of your best dishes. At the end of the day, one of you is going to be leaving the competition, the remaining three will be part of our final 12. One hour, 15 minutes. Off you go. I can't relax going into this next round. 
I've chosen these dishes because they're, they're quite creative, using different techniques, so I'm hoping everything just goes right on the day and I can bring it all together. How are we doing, Freddie? Uh, yeah, we're doing very well, thank you. I've uh, got quite a bit to do, but it should all pay off in the end. Some pretty formidable critics back through there. What are you cooking for them? I'm doing um, pan-roasted scallops with, uh, like, an assiette of cauliflower, so cauliflower puree, roasted cauliflower florets, uh, finished with an apple and cauliflower salad. So I hope they like cauliflower. <laughs> the main course, I'm doing uh, beef fillet with a uh, veal sweetbread uh, on a mushroom puree, the sort of food I like to eat, food I like to cook, so there's no better way to start than give the critics... What you like. What I like. <laughs> Freddie, this is for a place in our final 12. You want to be there, don't you? Uh, I want to be in your final three, chef. So oh, I'm, I I'm, like it. I'm really pushing on today just so I can get there. Good stuff. Freddie's first dish is going to be about the execution, whether Freddie can deliver the beautifully cooked scallops with the fantastic textures of cauliflower. Freddie's second dish, though, he's got a lot more going on. He's got a beef fillet, he's got sweetbreads, chestnut mushroom puree, as well as a red wine beef sauce to go with it. The mushroom puree needs to be intense and full of flavour. The red wine sauce, you want to have a beautiful shine to it. Complement that beautiful cooked beef and the veal sweetbread. Freddie needs to bring it all together under the pressure of cooking for those critics. Today, I can really kind of like feel the pressure on my back. You know, there's only four of us in there. Um, there's nothing to hide behind, so... But I've just got to, you know, stay really, really strong, get everything out as I've planned it, and, um, you know, hope for the best. Tell us about your two dishes, Olivia. So, I'm going to be starting off with a, a dexa beef tartare, smoked egg yolk puree, Pickled shallots, pickled shimiji mushrooms. Um, I'm going to put a sourdough uh, crisp on there. And then after that, I'm going to go on to roasted monkfish um, with sea vegetables, courgettes. And then I'm going to finish that with some um, lemon verbena and a mustard sauce. Has anyone tried these dishes before? Yes, they have. I do a bit of work sometimes um, in the development kitchen at work, so I've tried them out on a couple of guests there. And so far, have they, everyone liked it? Yeah. I think that the dishes I've got can get me through, but I just, you know, I need to kind of watch the clock uh, really carefully. If I get everything done, then um, I'll be really, really happy. We'd be really, really happy too. <laughs> Olivia is using Dexter beef for her tartare, which have a beautiful flavour to it. It's got to be finely chopped. We don't want big chunks of beef in there. The garnish is also very important. You want to taste the shallots, uh, maybe some pickling of the vegetables but you don't want it to overpower the dish. I think smoking the egg yolk will be a lovely addition. It will enhance the flavour, but you have to do it right. She needs to be very, very careful with the preparation, the cooking and the resting of her monkfish. If you mistreat monkfish, there's nowhere to hide with it. It's got to be about perfect cooking, her vegetables cooked well, finished with a wonderful butter sauce. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. We're just starting to overthink a little bit. So I've never thought of anything as long as this. It's just down to me not to freak out. <laughs> Today I'm going to cook uh, veal sweet bread, breaded in uh, toasted hazelnut as well, with an apple and celery puree, got an apple and celery slow, a pinot mustard uh, jus. And uh, I'm going to do a dessert. That's going to be a pistachio clafouti, and I'm going to do a plum and lavender uh, fricassé with uh, buttermilk and lavender sorbet. Your dishes uh, have been inspired from home? Yeah, as always, there's a little bit of home in those dishes. Uh, my grandmother used to cook us clafouti all the time, and it's always pretty brilliant with uh, an ice cream. So, uh, there you go. Brilliant. Thank Good you. luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Jan is very busy. He is absolutely calm in here, all guns blazing. The hazelnut crumb will bring a nutty element to the sweetbread. You do need to make sure that it cooks all of the way through. Serving it with a sauce and that beautiful sounding mustard seed going through it, delicious. Jan's dessert is a classic French dessert. Clafouti is a batter and normally it is served in a pastry case. 
Jan's clafete is a little bit different to, to the classic version. It's going to have the structure of it, but without the pastry. The clafetes are not working out. OK. So it's was what a happened? little too much sugar, and it just yeah. split. Okay. So are you going to uh, have time to make it again? I'm going to try to work it out. All right, come on, because it sounds delicious. I want to try this. <laughs> yeah. I'm pushing myself massively with this menu, but if I'm in the right headspace, I can definitely get it done. And I think if I love it and I put love into it, then what, what could go wrong? <laughs> the main course that Yaz is cooking is a poached chicken breast. It's got to be done slowly. She's just got to make sure that poaching liquid doesn't boil, otherwise it's going to become tough and dry. She's got a charred grill of onions, tarragon pesto, some morels and truffles, and a Madeira sauce. Her second dish is an apple tatata with a tobacco ice cream. I don't want a strong uh, tobacco flavour through the ice cream, but I'm really curious about it, and I can't wait to try it. Why tobacco ice cream? So it's inspired by my granddad. The tobacco I'm infusing through the creme anglaise is the tobacco he used to smoke. It's quite fruity, it's quite sort of aromatic. Um, so it should, it will have a background smokiness, but again, it'll be quite fruity. I think all the food I cook is heavily like nostalgic. So the food I grew, grew up with or the food that reminds me of certain people. So yeah, I think that's what I'm all about. You've got a lot of work to do. Good luck. Thank you. Chefs, you have 15 minutes before your first course needs to be served. I always have high hopes, and I really don't want to be disappointed. The gloves are off, frankly. We want some good food. When you keep it simple, when you're cooking for us, you're always going to get a hard time. However, if you can make those simple flavors sing, there's a chance you're the one that's going through. I'm looking forward to seeing the pros really go for it in terms of technique, in terms of craft, but I'm also hoping that we get a little bit of soul in there as well and a little bit of passion. Freddie, you've got 10 minutes before your first course needs to be served. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are we going to be all right? Yeah, we're going to be golden. Yes. Freddie can impress us because the scallops could be beautifully creamy. The pancetta could add that little salty element. I'm going to be quite interested in seeing how Freddie handles his proportions so that the cauliflower complements each other and we don't get a huge roasted piece and too much puree. It's interesting, a kind of uh, ode to cauliflower. Freddie. We've got a couple of minutes left. Um, it's all coming together. You happy with it? Uh, yes, I'm very happy. Yeah. So this is it, the final bit. OK, off you go. Put on your best smile. Thank you. It looks fab. Good afternoon, how are we? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so we have a roasted hand-dived scallop with pancetta, cauliflower puree, uh, roasted cauliflower, and uh, fresh cauliflower garnish. Thank Please you. Please enjoy. Thank you very Thank much. You. It's a really attractive plate. It's the sort of thing that makes you want to reflexively reach for your phone camera and take a picture. There's nothing actually wrong with the scallops. I mean, they're sweet, he's cooked them right, and they are the sort of heroes of the dish. Silky puree, cauliflower, which was soft enough to then get that crisp edge on it. You know, I ate the whole lot. However, uh, will I remember this tomorrow? No, I will not. 
The flavours come together quite nicely, but it does just feel a little bit underpowered, lacking in just something else to sort of take it to that next level. Freddy's scallops could have done with a little bit more roasting. They're a little bit on the bland side. I'm really thankful we have some of the pancetta on this plate because it's got the saltiness that's missing. It's a nice dish, but it could be so much better. Right, Freddie, 15 minutes for that main course. You gonna be on time? Um, yes, absolutely. So the star of the show on this plate will be the beef fillet. If that's wrong, everything on the plate tends to be wrong too. Is the veal sweet bread butter drenched and delicious? Is the mushroom puree bursting with flavour? And if that comes together, we'll be blown away. Freddie, you've got two minutes left, so you've got a bit of time. You happy? Yeah, it's how I'd eat it. OK, off you go. So I prepared for you here roasted beef fillet, chestnut mushroom puree, roasted veal sweetbread, asparagus with a red wine sauce, and braised shallot. Okay. Please enjoy. Thank Cheers. you. Okay. I thought the fillet of beef was rare, but also, you know, had a lovely edge to it that saved it from being too frightening <laughs> to some people. I loved how he prepared the asparagus. It was delicious. I quite enjoyed the sweet bread. It was kind of subtle and tasty and kind of Moorish, and that kind of fried batter on it was lovely. A really nice jus, delicious mushroom puree. The fundamentals of this plate are good, and I'm very pleased for him. The beef for me is slightly under what I would normally have. I think the sauce is nice. It could have a little bit more flavour to it, maybe a touch more reduction. The garnishes are lovely and fresh. They're nicely cooked. I like his two dishes, but I think he's got room to improve. Uh, relieved of the savour. It's definitely the toughest challenge yet. Yeah. It's extremely stressful, sticking to that sort of time limit. But I'm hoping it all pulls off. We shall see. <laughs> Olivia, you've got 15 minutes to go. Yep. How's, how's everything looking for your first course? Yeah, good. Pretty much ready for the tartare. Just to get this in a bag, I'm going to pipe it on the top. All on time, looking good. Keep it going. Thank you. I'm fairly sure that in something like 15 years of filming MasterChef, I've never been given a, a beef tartare. Also, she's doing something different, a smoke egg yolk puree. Olivia is bold and quite brave. She's kind of adding these contemporary twists, the pickled shallots and sourdough crisp. Sign me up. Olivia, you've got two minutes. Yeah, just putting all the little herbs on now and then should be good to go. Off you go. Looks good. Yeah, looks very good. <sighs> Got Dexter B4 of Tata with smoked egg yolk puree, some sourdough crisps on the top. It's finished with some pickled shallots, pickled shimiji mushrooms, and fresh herbs that I grew myself. Enjoy. Thank you very Thank you. much. I can honestly say that that is one of the, the finest beef tartars I've eaten in a very, very long time. There's something rather miraculous about it, actually. And that smoked yolk, there's a sort of silky, eggy feel that goes through it that just heightens the idea of that classic raw egg. This is a truly exceptional dish. Every time you move a little bit of the forestry, you find <laughs> another little thing hiding. <laughs> there's something just really otherworldly about it. I like that. It's got real oomph and real boldness. That was incredible. The beef is delicious, 
There's lovely sharpness running through it, the pickling of the little shallots, the little capers running through that. Delicious. Olivia, 15 minutes for your main course. Yep. There are dangers here. Firstly, obviously, she's got to cook the fish right. It's so important. That and is this dish going to be a little bit too sweet? You know, with the mussels and the mussel butter. Elderflower with mussels, first time in my life. Don't let me down, Olivia. Olivia, we've got two minutes left. What have you got to do? You just need to get the fish on the plate and um, finish with the elderflower. Looking good. You happy with it? Yeah, yeah. happy. We're we nearly there. We're good. Yeah, just Last touches. Now. I've cooked for you today roasted monkfish and butter, courgettes, which have been cooked in a lemon verbena and elderflower stock, poached mussels, and then some sea vegetables. You've got monk's beard, rock samphire, and pennywort. Courgette, which has been roasted in the monkfish butter, and it's finished with a mussel stock sauce. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Wow. This is wonderful. It's Poetry made flesh. This is an ode to monkfish. The star of the dish, this meaty, fleshy piece of fish cooked just right. And the buttery, muscly foam, not too buttery. There's an ease and a grace to this dish mm. that doesn't make it a challenge to eat, but makes you really think, wow, how did you do that? The elderflower wasn't too assertive. It was just a suggestion, and it absolutely worked. The vegetables are fantastic, the courgette ribbons. It looked great, it tasted great. I just want to keep eating Olivia's food. <laughs> the fish is nicely cooked and she's got a lovely caramelisation around the outside. The sauce has a lot of flavour. Then all the vegetables here work really well. I'm happy, um, you know, it went as I planned it to. There weren't any kind of curveballs, so I'm just really hoping that I've done what it takes now. Right, Jan, you've got two minutes left to go. Oui. Are you on time? Uh, yes. This <laughs> is a big personality. To go in and give us all real sweetbreads, it's a big ask. There's a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of other kind of distractions on the plate. It's an interesting one. He's kind of gone for it, which, which you have to respect. So sauces, mustard, oil. Yeah. All right, you ready? Here we are. Thank you. For your main course today, we've got veal sweet bread coated in toasted hazelnuts, celeriac and apple puree, uh, celeriac and apple slow, and the jus is uh, veal jus with red wine and pinot mustard. Hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you. The sweet breads and the slaw, that rich gravy, and the puree. Uh, you know, I, I love the way these things come together, and I think he's cooked them really well. But then there's something incredibly sweet, sweet to almost a treacle tart level that's coming through this. It's bold and it's assertive, but not in the right ways. He's got the hazelnut crumb on there, and it kind of just lends the whole thing a kind of gritty, not particularly flavorful bent. 
There are elements there that show that Yan can cook, but it's just not really hanging together for me. Great sauce making, great puree, love the salad, love the mustard. I love the freshness of the apple and celeriac salad with the watercress on top. I normally find the sweetbread really rich, so the freshness cuts through it. I like that a lot. OK, clafouti. Clafouti, indeed. Do we have enough time? Uh, I've got eight minutes going there. Yeah. And uh, should be ready on time, yes. Well, you've got 15 minutes. There we go. OK. Thank you. Pistachio clafouti is something I've never had before. Buttermilk and lavender sorbet. Now, that sounds great. Lavender's a difficult thing because it can be overpowering. I'm intrigued to see how it comes together. How are they looking? So, again, not so good overall. Uh, maybe it's just, just too much fat in the mix. So, is it okay to serve? Is it, is it edible? Yes, I think it's going to be good, but it's not quite uh, the texture I wanted. They look a little bit mushy. Right, you've got probably a minute and a half left. We. Oui. So sorbet goes on, and we're sending? Yes. Wow, well, you're done. Yes. Thanks, Jan. You know what? I am glad he didn't give up. He kept going. Thank you, Jan. For dessert, Jan is serving a pistachio clafouti with pistachio crumble sitting on a bed of plum fricassee topped with a buttermilk and lavender sorbet. Hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hats off to Jan. Um, the plum fricassee, it's this kind of amazing, delicately diced, stewed fruit. The sorbet was not overpoweringly lavendery for me. What it is, is a fruity crumble with lots of sugar and uh, just a light dollop of florist bath essence. And I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jan will either never cook again after this competition or we'll have three Michelin stars and we will no longer be able to get yeah. into his restaurant. Yeah. It's one or the other. I am really enjoying the flavours of this dessert. Textures of, of the pistachio crumb, and the, and the plums underneath it is wonderful. The buttermilk and lavender sorbet is absolutely delicious. It's fresh, it's light, and it complements this dish very, very well. That was pretty... Yeah, that was pretty hard. Not really good under pressure, though. Probably why I quit restaurants. I don't like to be pushed around too much. Yes, we've got three minutes. Yep. Are we ready? Almost there. Are you happy with the cooking of the chicken? I'm really happy. It's nice and moist. Pan-fried chicken breast is not something you expect to see. It screams dinner party more than it does restaurant-quality food, but the stuff in and around that shows to me that Yaz is kind of thinking about interesting ingredients. Right, you start thinking about plating now, Yaz. Yeah. What's the puree? This is shallot puree. I suspect this is a bit of a, a crowd pleaser that uh, she's quite good at knocking out. Is that the last thing to go on now? Yeah, just this, then the sauce, uh, and a tiny bit of garnish, and I'm ready to go. That's it. You done? Yeah. I've cooked uh, chicken breast with charred grilled onions, Madeira sauce, you've got uh, shallot puree, morels, and a little bit of fresh truffle on the top there as well with the tarragon pesto. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. She's got some incredibly crisp, buttery chicken skin. There's a very, very rich puree. 
I worry that it plays the same note of richness a little too often, and I was kind of crying out for something else to, to cut through it or some bit of contrast. The chicken is cooked really well. It's a crowd-pleasing supper dish for, for a bunch of mates who'd be incredibly happy to eat it. You've got a rich sauce, you've got rich chicken, you've got a rich puree, but the onions are, are bland in their flavour. It's not the most refined plate of food. The chicken is cooked nicely, but for me, it's screaming out for, for a bit more seasoning throughout. That's horrible. That was terrible. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh. <laughs> I know what you mean. OK, my dessert's underway. Just waiting for my ice cream. My tart stands are in. OK, good to hear. If the tartar -tar is beautifully gooey and uh, crisp at the edge, but not soggy, that would be fantastic. I'm really, really happy, actually. Just come on, ice cream. <laughs> I have never tasted tobacco <laughs> ice cream before. I assume it works beautifully. My life is in Yaz's hands. Two minutes. Yeah, so close. It's nearly there. I'm just going to the wire now. Is this going to be the longest two minutes of your cooking career? I think so. <laughs> I think it might just start without the ice cream. You might have to in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You go. Don't hang around. Go, go, go. Well done. Thank you. I think that looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Today I've made an apple tart tatan, which I've served with a tobacco ice cream. Enjoy. Wonderful, thank you. I think my dishes were just as I wanted them to be. I just hope they enjoy it and enjoy eating it and want to dig in, so that's all I can hope for. <laughs> it's a really lovely tart tartare. Very rustic, very beautiful, sweet, cooked, cooked really well, I mean, to perfection, really. The tobacco ice cream, this isn't a playful amount of tobacco. It's not just a, a musky taste that might be in an aftershave or something like that. That is licking an ashtray. It is cigarette <laughs> ashtray level, slightly unpleasant. I have no <laughs> idea why you put it in it, but it's in there, mm. and it's a shame. Kind of mars the goodwill that mm. you have developed towards the star of the show, which is done beautifully. The tata tart is, is delicious. The apples are caramelised. I like how the caramel catches the pastry. I'm not a fan of the tobacco ice cream, this effect it's having in the back of the, the throat, it's not pleasant. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Good day. I think it's been a very good day. Good to see them rise to the challenge and be inspired by cooking for our critics. The chef of the day for the critics was Olivia. She wowed them with the steak tartare and her monkfish main course for them was the dish of the day. Olivia didn't really put a foot wrong. She executed everything she wanted. There was a few little points here and there that we would like to see improving, but I'm really excited to see what she can do next. Olivia definitely goes straight through. Now we have to decide between Jan, Yaz and Freddy. Freddy today thought his scallop dish was a good-looking plate of food, a tasty plate of food, but he could have taken it up to another level. The critics weren't that impressed with Freddy's starter, but the beef dish, they said, really redeemed him. It was slightly under, but the presentation was good. Overall, I enjoyed Freddy's dish. I really liked Jan's menu. The red wine and pinot mustard sauce was divine. I really liked the freshness of the apple and celeriac salad he had on the top with, with that sauce. This is a dish I could have finished easily. Jan's dessert, pistachio clafouti. The pistachio flavours was delicious. Finished with that fabulous sorbet and the scent of lavender was exceptional. Wasn't much to look at, but very tasty. Yes, 
The main course, I liked the chicken cookery, I loved the sauce, the garnish wasn't great, the little gullet onions were, were blanched, they didn't have much flavour. I just didn't think Yes executed this dish uh, as good as she could have, but apple tatata, -ta, delicious. Their ice cream, I never want to see it, try it, smell it, sniff it, smoke it, no. I set the bar up at the at lockout week at sort of semi-final stage, um, so I really hope I don't go home. I want this more than anything. <laughs> I'd love to go through to the knockouts, yeah, but uh, I'm not confident that I will. Uh, I'd be extremely disappointed if I went home now. Um, I'd have to, yeah, I'd, I'd kick myself a lot for not cooking the beef enough. I'd have to wait and see with me. They all had issues with their cooking today, but we need to decide who excites us. Who do we want to see in our final 12? Without doubt, you all raised the bar here today. Well done to all of you. But unfortunately, one of you is going to have to leave the competition. The chef leaving us today is... Yaz. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Yaz. I felt quite confident. Everything I cooked, I was pretty happy with. Don't worry, Bish. <laughs> I'm gutted. Well done, guys. Well done. It's a big well done. Congratulations. You three are part of our final 12. I feel very happy, very proud, um, and I'm really excited about going forward. Um, yeah, got tons more to show. Today was very nerve-wracking, but I feel amazing, so it's OK. I still need to keep, keep pushing and get, get to the final three. The bar was kind of raised today, and the standards got a lot higher, so I've kind of just got to keep calm and, um, you know, go forward. Congratulations. Well done. Cheers. Well done. Good health. Next time, six more professionals compete for a place in the quarter-final. What's happened? Totally evaporated. I really am interested in the way you think about food. Intriguing. I love this. Absolutely love it. Oh, no. <laughs>